Broadcasting live from the Business Radio X studios in Woodstock, Georgia, it's time for Cherokee Business Radio. Now, here's your host. Welcome to another exciting and informative edition of Cherokee Business Radio. Stone Payton here with you this morning. And today's episode is brought to you in part by Alma Coffee. Sustainably grown, veteran-owned, and direct trade, which of course means from seed to cup, there are no middlemen. Please go check them out at myalmacoffee.com and go visit their Roastery Cafe at 3448 Holly Springs Parkway in Canton. As for Harry or the brains of the outfit, Leticia, and please tell them that Stone sent you. First up on Cherokee Business Radio this morning, it is my distinct pleasure to welcome to the broadcast with Kid Biz Empowering Youth Entrepreneurs, Miss Renee Deerdorf. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for having us. Oh, it's a delight to have you and your 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 corporate structure here. Yes. <laughs> In the studio, we had a chance to touch base at a Million Cups mm-hmm. event, which I thoroughly enjoyed, and I, I felt like you were... So are both of you, um, you and Amy both, so articulate, uh, so passionate about what you're doing. But let's talk about, uh, uh, as as we start here, mission, purpose. Why are you doing this, Renee? (laughs) Well, um, our overall mission and goal is to empower youth entrepreneurs um, and their entrepreneurial spirit um, through entrepreneurship. So the things that they learn through that journey, um, those lessons they learn, they're invaluable. So whether or not they go on to run their own business or not, it's the journey and the lessons learned along the way that we are trying to um, create a space for for that. So I suspect you've learned a couple of things along the way too, mm-hmm. right? Not just, Absolutely. <laughs> not just your... We're leading by example. <laughs> <laughs> so what was the genesis? A noble pursuit. I think we can mm-hmm. all identify with that. Sure. Nobody says, ah, oh, we don't want to do that in this community, right? <laughs> yes. Uh, but none of the rest of us did it. <laughs> so what was yeah. the genesis? What was the catalyst? Well, um, I mean, I mean, Amy can probably speak to this, but her youngest or her middle kiddo, Avery, um, wanted to sell cotton candy. Ah. And started there. Um, I don't want to. I mean, yeah. So um, about two years ago, um, one summer, Avery decided that she was going to rule the world by selling cotton candy. All right, way <laughs> to go, Avery! Uh, she had her toy machine, um, and she wanted to be different. So she started figuring out ways to do flavors. Um, I was all aboard. Like I was like, "This is amazing! I'm gonna, you know, support you full." Wholeheartedly, um, her sisters became her employees, and we started um, <laughs> mm-hmm. making cotton candy and going to farmers markets at least once a week as like a summer project. It kept him busy, which was great. Mm-hmm. Um, and then our sisters were like, "Wait a minute, we want to be a business owner. <laughs> we don't want to be an employee." <laughs> so then we had to decide um, individually because she has two of them, which who was going to do what and what was going to be their businesses. So now I've got three kids with businesses oh my. going to farmer's markets. And then that kind of trickled because, uh, my oldest best friend is Renee's oldest daughter, Layla. So, um, also, so then Layla was like, well, my best friend's making money. So here we are <laughs> in a trickle down effect with five girls with businesses going to farmer's markets around the County. Um, just, letting them explore what they could do and how they could um, run their own little companies. Um, Everybody did something different, but we did start to notice that the community loved the ideas of, you know, having these kids out there. And we predominantly were the only kids out there in these markets. You know, um, most markets are even artist markets, vendor markets in general are mostly adults. So it was a unique, um, to have these kids out there. And so everybody was very supportive, but it kind of came down to, well, this is really cute, but if there's an adult across the way making something a little bit better or this, it really wasn't the right venue at the same time. So Mm -hmm. we're like, we need a more, um, even Even kid oriented, yeah, kid oriented, even playing field because there's, there's probably more kids out there. It's not just our five kids that want to do this. So we kind of, ran with that at the time we're like wait a minute let's see what we could do with this and we it's actually about a year ago now right was our very first time that we did it so last august 
we kind of just put it out there. We're like, hey, is do any other parents have kids with an entrepreneurial spirit, have a small business, don't know where to take them, don't know what to do, want them to have a place to showcase what they've got. And we created the first Kid Biz Expo and we had 28 kids. Wow. The mm -hmm. very first time. And it, all we did was put make a post on Facebook. And we had 28 <laughs> kids right away. We hosted it at a uh, Sutali Baptist church up on highway 20. And we had, so without anything residual, like no other events happening, no other things going on in that general area. Cause it's kind of out there <laughs> on 20. Um, just with our promotion alone, we probably had at least 300 people from the community just come oh, out solely great. to support these kids. Yeah. The, the feel <laughs> in the air, like you could just, everybody was stoked. Like it was very exciting. The kids, you could just see going from like, we're not sure about this to like, oh my God, I'm killing this by the end of the day, like their confidence levels. It was amazing. And everybody was very interactive, very generous. And, you know, you, they stopped by each booth and they would talk to the kids like, how did you do this? What's going on? Kind of mm -hmm. things. And the community support was amazing. So we kind of took it from there. Yeah. They were like, are you going to do this again? Not just the kids that were participating, the parents are participating, but the community. Like, are you going to, there's going to be more of these and stuff. And so mm -hmm. we packed up that day and we're like, man, we're tired. We'll just re we'll revisit this, revisit this in a few days. And just the very next day, we're like, let's do this again. <laughs> we couldn't help it. We, you know, so then we did another one in November. So I bet some of the businesses were interesting. What kind of businesses were were the kids in? What kind of things We've were We've had broad ranges. So our daughters alone. So Layla makes dip, dry dip mixes. Mm -hmm. Austin does epoxy resin. At the time, Avery did cotton candy. We have since rebranded to popcorn. Uh -huh. Um uh, Harper has done um, hot chocolate, but I think she's re doing muffins this time. But we've had like baked goods, lots of jewelry, some um, artwork in general. We had um, uh, magic so kits. Magic kits. Some of the boys get really creative trying to go in different directions. Yeah. So we mm -hmm. had like PVC marshmallow shooters, walking sticks. We have slime. <laughs> um, melted crayons. Melted crayons, turning them into different shapes. Mm -hmm. Um, the, the creativity out there was, was quite amazing. It was a, a full gamut of options. Yeah. I'll bet. And now this thing has grown beyond just the expo, right? There, mm -hmm. There's several pillars, aspects to the, to the whole thing. Yes. Speak to that a little bit. Yeah. So we have, I guess if you consider the, the expo is a program, it's the main overall goal that we're trying to get kids ready for and get, let them showcase themselves to the community. But under that we have, um, the kid biz workshop. And that's where a business professional in the community comes out and talks to the kids and teaches them um, a certain subject. It's usually business related, but can be um, mindset, um, just general life skills. Um, and then we have Kid Biz Coach, where it is a kid and a adult can, in a group setting, mentor each other. Uh -huh. um, we'll do those a couple times a year. And then we have Kid Biz Connect, where it's peer to peer networking so that they can be among other kids that are in the same mindset as them and going through the same life experience and learn from and um bouncy just ideas bounce, off yeah, each brainstorm other. but also just get just have someone relate to them fantastic mm -hmm. all right let's hear from, from some entrepreneurs okay uh, uh layla hi hello layla <laughs> tell us tell us about uh, about this business that you that, that you're in now um my business is dip it good it's like dry dip mixes. Um, they come in like, there's nine flavors. Yeah. And you can have samples at the markets and you put them in sour cream. I have one sweet flavor oh. that's cream cheese and they make dips. It sounds marvelous. Just last night, I made like these chicken patty things. So I'm wondering if I couldn't have mixed it in with that. Like yes, I, I yes, took some chicken yes. and, and did some eggs and mm -hmm. some breadcrumbs, but I could have put some of this um, in there, right? Fiesta is really good with that. Well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> See, she's taking she me can... right to the yes. – <laughs> she's closing. Yes. Yes. She's very good. She knows what <laughs> pairs well with things now. Um, you can also put, like, the some, some of the flavors on the sandwiches. Some are good with, like, desserts, apples, carrots. All right, so it's cool now, but you had to get started. And I th mm -hmm. entrepreneurs of, of any age, I think sometimes they can think it all through, sometimes maybe even overthink it through, but it's, it's, it's getting it going. Uh, what was the, 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 the thing that you enjoyed the most about, 
about launching it and getting it going, and what what did you find the most difficult, the most challenging? Um, the most challenging part was uh, <laughs> there wasn't anything challenging, but there was a part where like you have to figure out what flavors and which like what's better and what's not because one of my flavors it was good. But it wasn't, like, fantastic, so I had to tweak uh-huh. the recipe a little bit, and now it's a really good seller. Were, were there any flavors that sounded good on paper or they, when you were talking but or thinking about it, and then you try to, like, nah, that's not going to play? Actually, all <laughs> of them have kind of worked out. <laughs> Are you We're, wanting to maybe change things up a little? Yeah, um, I feel like seasonal flavors would be cool, like pumpkin something for fall, and like idea. fun fruit things for spring and summer. That'd be cool. All right, so the the primary application of this that that you know works is um, you mix it in with sour cream. Mm -hmm. All right, and then what do you do with the sour cream? There must be a a gazillion things you can do with it once you've got your your flavored sour cream made, yeah? You can put it sandwiches, just with chips, with pretzels, um, with carrots. It's really good. All right, so you so bagels. you bagels, <laughs> bagels. Oh, that sounds. All right, so you go to the expo, or you or maybe someone finds you somehow, some way. They know that you're selling this. What does that conversation look like? Because they probably ask some of the same questions, but but mainly yeah. they just they want to go home with something and the mm-hmm. right thing. So, what is that conversation like? Um, I like hi. Um, I have samples, so that draws them in like hey free food um and then <laughs> they just try them all some people try one and is like yes and then they're like i want to try this one i want to try that one and then once they kind of have their mind set on a few i have a deal where it's like more for cheaper and then you can now order- whose idea was that to do like with this these deals these <laughs> so it's good to have a mentor have mm-hmm. some input right and yeah then they can order online i talk about that and then sometimes people will ask like How'd you do this? What made you get into this? Where do you see going? Mm-hmm. So sometimes there were really long conversations about that. Fantastic. Mm-hmm. All right. So did, did Harper switch with me or do I still have Harper on the other end here? Who, who's at the mic right here? This is this Austin. 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 Okay. I think when I look down, so that Austin yeah. snuck in there. Austin, tell us a little bit about your business. Um, I sell a epoxy crafts, which include tumblers, keychains, trays, uh-huh. pens, all sorts of little things. Really, if it has a silicone mold, I could figure out how to make it. So, so there's a lot of those things, and they can do all kinds of colors and glitters and any sort of design on the object itself. So we have Austin Actually, tumblers in the room. I know you guys yeah. can't see that out in radio land, but we have Austin tumblers I've in the room. I've made a cup for each of the... <laughs> They're very good. <laughs> Fun. And I, I'm operating under the impression we could have a, a business Radio X tumbler. Oh, made, absolutely. Right? Yes, yes, definitely. This is so cool. <laughs> I think we should do that and maybe like raffle it off or like a prize for a sponsor or That'd part of cool. a sponsor gift. Yeah. That would be great. That, that, that could be fun. Uh, so why that? Did you think about other businesses and then you... You said, and then you kind of migrated to that? Well, so like she said earlier, my sister had started cotton candy, and about a year or so later, my mom was scrolling on Facebook, and she saw an ad for resin coasters, and she's like, oh, that'd be really cool to do. And so we went and bought the mold and try, went, watched a couple YouTube videos and figured out how to do it. And once we did figure out how to do it, we realized there were so many other things you could do with resin. (laughs) And so it started with a couple coasters, and then we went on from there. And then a a little while later, I started going to farmer's markets with Avery. And so that's kind of how that (laughs) became a thing. All right. Went and bought the mold. Let's talk about that a little bit, because sometimes entrepreneurs have to make an investment early on before they're getting a, a return. Did you... Get your capital? Did you get your money from another source? Did you save it up? Did you borrow? Talk, talk us through that. Who was your primary investor? Um, <laughs> we've got some generous investors. Yes, yeah. I have a quite generous <laughs> <Little>. investor. <laughs> That helps me purchase some of my things. So you and got then, some of that help? Do you pay, do you pay it back? Yes. After yes. the expos, I give her whatever amount spent on that specific expo, I give her back what does she get that in a little bit more? Does she get like any interest or like a return? <laughs> I get my products for free. Oh, well, okay. <laughs> so All right. That there's perks. That'll work. There's perks. All right. So sounds like it's been fun. Sounds like it's been rewarding. You yes. clearly enjoy it. And you're a human and sometimes things may not go well all the time. What are some of the challenges in running this business in particular and business in general? 
Um, well, was this one specifically when you have to mix resin like perfectly or it will not harden correctly. And ah. I've, I've made a bunch of cups where it does not work and the resin's still sticky and so you can't use the cup. Or some of the other things, they're bendy or just don't look good. So that's one of the things that'll work. And then sometimes any of the designs or stickers won't stay. And so then it looks weird when you put the resin over it. So it's become a science. It's become yeah. a science <laughs> that you have to perfect to make it work. So what have you learned about the marketplace and what people want and maybe they don't want or what they like more or how they like to go by or what, what, what have you learned from interacting with the customers? Um, most of them, when they come up to my tent, they'll start looking at the tumblers because there's a ton of different designs that you can do, or they'll ask me like, how did this start? Or why did you do this? Or whatnot. Um, there's a bunch of keychains that usually, um, get bought that people will look at. Keychains? Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah, you, you don't have one that floats, do you? I just lost my hat. Did you know a hat didn't float? I thought hats would float. And oh. I was at, I was at the river. So anyway, just <laughs> if you put a little floaty thing on one. <laughs> but keychains are popular though. Mm -hmm. yes. yes. And jewelry. Jewelry. Yeah. And necklaces, keychains, and tumblers are probably the main three that get um, sold to I have one of your necklaces. I like it. Oh, you guys do business with each other, so you, got, you <laughs> yes. team up. And do you ever I give her food? She gives me necklaces. Yeah, <laughs> and if someone buys one of your dips, you can all you can always say, "Oh, you you might really enjoy a keychain or a tumbler. You can help each other out." I've yeah. done that a couple times and sent them over to her table. Like we have yeah. four other children. <laughs> yes, <laughs> visit everyone. Well, no, that's handy and it's important. I don't. Again, no matter what age you are, you know, in my world, it's in, it's important that I work with other people with other media platforms. Sure, and we try to collaborate other people in other lines of business or or if i have a client who's a professional services person they might be a cpa but maybe they tell their you know a business attorney hey maybe you ought to talk to star or at least come on the show if not right. if not become a all right so let's talk about the where so it's it's nice when you have the expo and and, and the people come to you have you found other places like uh i don't know like a a website or a facebook page or something like that uh, yeah, and we've also been to a couple different farmer's markets. One was at River Church on Sixes Road. Mm -hmm. um, one of them was in Ball Ground on that green. Yeah. And social media, um, we do sell a couple things there. We each well, have our Facebook page. So. Yeah, people can order my stuff on the Facebook page. Oh, nice. All right, yeah. so you're, you've got an e-commerce <laughs> situation going there, yeah? So professional. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, fa that's fantastic. <laughs> All right, so uh, moms, we, we have an event or some events coming up. Absolutely. Okay. We have um, at our next expo is uh, July 24th. We'll be here in Woodstock on the, the green... Like right Woodstock behind Reformation. Re green. Reformation is 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 my um, beacon, and then uh, everything is in reference to Reformation. Okay, for so me. <laughs> that makes sense. We will be uh, directly across from Reformation yes. in the arts green green event area. Switch. <laughs> um, that is um, August, like I said, July twenty fourth from one to six. All right, we so have right now 46 children signed up to be oh vendors. Oh, my. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. Well, color me there. You know I'm going to be there. Yes. We would love to have you there. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, all right. So do you pay an admission to, to get in the venue itself or no? No, it's free to the public. Yep, <clears throat> the venue itself is just a fun, free community event. Um, the vendors set up and do their thing. We'll have uh, face painters and ice cream trucks and all the fun things that make it a good worthwhile event but uh, the vendors do their thing so it, it is for them to do very yeah. nice so yeah. come bring your wallet yes right? absolutely <laughs> come to shop and and yes. be ready to shop and, and 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 talk with these young young yeah, entrepreneurs we do want them we do want the public to talk to them because there's a lot that can be they can learn a lot from the questions that they ask yeah um but the public learns a lot from them too absolutely and it's really really cool i'll bet all right so let's hear from a couple of other entrepreneurs i have harper and austin avery and avery, avery. but man oh, we have studio full here yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> all right harper talk to me tell me about your business so um, 
You oh, know I what? Can't hear you. you know what I'm going to do, Harper? I'm going to turn your microphone on, and that's going to make the whole thing sound better. <laughs> I turned it down when you guys were switching around, so I'm, I'm getting better at this. You know, look, you know, we're, we're, all, practice. we're all practicing. <laughs> Let's try it again now that I turned your microphone on. Um, so <laughs> I make kind of like circle cakes, and I'm gonna. They're, like, they're called cake bites, right? Yeah. My business name is Cake and Glaze. Yes. Cute. Cake and Glaze. All right. So uh, a lot of different flavors? Yeah. You have a lot of different tastes? Different people like different ones? Yeah. What's your favorite? Oreo. <laughs> <laughs> I think I could like Oreo. Will you have Oreo at this next event that they're talking about? Will you bring Oreo? Yeah. Yeah? Mm-hmm. How about jalapeno? No. <laughs> what other flavors do you think you're gonna do? What do we get? Um, cinnamon crunch. Oh, baby. And lemon. Lemon. Chocolate. And funfetti. Yeah. That sounds good. All right. So, so okay. one thing that I don't think the general public always acknowledges, and maybe even newer entrepreneurs may not realize, there's there's the where you're at the booth and you're at the event, or it's available online. Sometimes they don't see all the activity, all of the work that goes into getting ready to be able to actually hand someone the Oreo cake yeah. and get to tell me a little bit about all the work behind the scenes that has to happen, for example, to get ready for the this event. There's a lot of there's a lot that goes into it, isn't there? It's really simple to be to be honest with you. It's you just it's supposed to be a like whenever I get the box it's supposed to be a cake. So I make the batter. And then I can, there's like this little mini oven, you know, and it has like nine spheres in it. Yeah. And then. um, So you figured out the process, but while you're in there doing that work, and I think it sounds like you enjoy the work. Yeah, it's really fun. Some of the other kids are out playing. You're, mm-hmm. Right, and, and maybe you're playing too, which is part of why uh, us entrepreneurs yeah. we enjoy what we're doing. But there's a lot to it. Okay, so you got to make up the batter, then you got to make them pretty, right, and package them so that it looks like something I might want to buy. Yeah, it's gonna be where someone buys it and then they can eat it while they're walking around the kitchen. Well, and then they'll buy another walking. one before they leave. Mm, that's right. <laughs> that's, a, <laughs> that's a good idea. Yeah. Encourage them to eat it right now and tell them to come back by on their way out, right? You're going to yeah. have samples too, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, there's going to be free samples. All right. Fantastic. All right. Again, I'm all mixed up with the names. Austin? Avery. Nope. Avery. All right. <laughs> Avery, lay it on me. Now, now you started this she whole started thing, started the you not? whole thing. All right. So talk about that very first idea with the cotton candy. You personally like cotton candy? Was that part of yes. it? Yeah? All right. So tell us more about where in the world did you think, at what point did you say, hey, I want to do this. I want to make this a business. Um. So I got a cotton candy machine for Christmas, and I wanted to do something fun. So um, we started to get, like, logos and um, started to go to farmer's markets at River Church. Mm-hmm. And then... Um, How did you come up with your flavors? Because that's where it was very creative. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> did you ask anybody what they might like, or you, you, you went with your favorites at first? Um... I mean, I went with my favorites and <laughs> and some of the mo- best sellers that I would take to. Um, there you go. Most. Well, that's what I did. I, I I started out doing the shows that I wanted to do, talking to people, and, and then I found out that clients and listeners and people they had ideas for other shows, kind of conversations they would want to have. And then, yes, I also gravitated to the best sellers, right? <laughs> That's that's just good, solid business right there. All right, so this has not been that long. I mean, it might seem longer to you than it does to me because yeah. I have gray hair. But it's only been like <laughs> this whole thing is like a year a year old. It, a lot has happened in a year. Yes. Uh, I'm going to ask you both, but I'll, I'll um, start with, with you, Avery. Where do you see this thing going like a, a year from now? Will it, will it be bigger and all of that or – what do you think? Will you be selling more stuff? Yeah, I think it will definitely be bigger, and I'll have more ideas and um, better 
flavors or um, any other ideas. Yeah. And how about you, Miss Harper? Um, I'll probably start game. I'll probably start to make like other kinds of cake. So yeah. Yeah. And then I'll just grow from there. <laughs> yeah. So, and I'll start with you, Harper. But I want I want to ask you both about this question. If we had, and we probably do, <laughs> a, a seasoned business person, a mentor, who has been through a lot, probably made some mistakes, probably had a great many successes. If you could ask them a question that you think would would help you or something you've been curious about that might help you in your business, is there a is there a question or something you've been wondering about, something that you would want to have a conversation about? Not really. No, you got it figured out, huh? <laughs> I you, knew that was good. <laughs> you, you got to. You don't need a bunch of outside. You just, but you do pay attention to your customers. That's a good. Yeah. The customers are good mentors, right? Because they're good, they will speak to you. If they don't tell you directly, they'll tell you um, by by what they bought. Mm-hmm. Right mm-hmm. at the last expo, you yeah. can you can learn you can learn from them. Avery, how about you? Would you have a question that you would want to know, like a, anything from managing the money to how to sell more, or you got this thing figured out too? I think I got it figured out. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> it's true. They've been coming to our workshops. So. <laughs> you have been going to the workshops, yeah? yeah. So what kind of things do they talk about at the workshops? Just like how to like time management. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, I need to go to that workshop. <laughs> it was very. That's the only one I've been to. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Usually, the older ones are the ones that that can hold the tension long enough. Yeah. 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 I well, can, I can barely hold it. <laughs> that, that might be true. I think those of us that uh, there's some of us, regardless of age, that. Um, that remains a challenge. True, true. <laughs> yeah. I feel that. Mm-hmm. All right, so I'll ask you two the same question, sure. uh, and I'll start with with you, Amy. Where, where do you see this thing going? Um, well, our worldwide. I'm world, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, our plans and our dreams and hopes and aspirations for um, Kid Biz Expo in general, as our program, like as our organization grows, we would love a stable, um, a solid facility in the community um, to kind of become that staple of where you send your kids to enhance their entrepreneurial spirit, to learn more about business, to learn life skills, to practice these, these things. We could um, have more pop-up shops. We could do class, like uh, classes and camps, longer classes and camps Mm -hmm. than just the occasional workshops. We could offer more to these kids that want to absorb it, just the things that the they may not be getting in a traditional school setting because the curriculum doesn't have the time for it or yeah. uh, the focus for it just based on different schooling systems, but just having an out, an outside resource that these kids can go to and learn these skills at a young age and kind of just prepare them for not only business, but just a lot of life skills. Well, it certainly seems like there's plenty of opportunity. I'm sure there are sure. plenty of kids and, and, and parents who would love to to be a part of this. So the, I, it may be close to infinite as far as the number of people you could you could serve in, in that way, yeah? Absolutely. Um, I mean, we would love to make it something where we could have chapters across the state. So like we're the uh-huh. Cherokee County version, yeah, we could have the yeah. Cobb version. If we um, solidify how it works <laughs> um, and duplicate it and, and offer, then more children can benefit from it. Well, you, you know, you bring up a good point because uh, so much of what you've learned, you're going to want to get this and maybe you're already working on this. You're going to want to get the... I call it the playbook, but you're going to yeah. want to get it bottled, right, and mm-hmm. documented so that it's mm-hmm. you have repeatable processes yes. and transferable tools. We are in that process. We have a board of directors. Oh, um, okay. And so we are working on um, all the, the dotting our I's and crossing our T's, getting everything organized. That's fantastic. Uh, so, Renee, what can the community do to, to help? How can the community at large, how can businesses, how can mm-hmm. media um, – how can we help? Well, um, at the grassroots level, people coming out and supporting the kids at the expos, um, mm-hmm. sharing our workshops and getting the word out. Um, and when you hear this, just getting the word out and getting letting people know who we are. On a business level, uh, we need donations because Amy and I operate at, or, you know, we, we don't take a salary from this this is our own time we donate this our hasn't time been a this. wealth building exercise no yet. <laughs> it has been a self-funded exercise um but we've talked several times um when it's just me and her and it's like this feels important so it's 100 percent worth it 
Yeah. Um, and it doesn't really matter how long it takes to kind of build things where we um, can make this our full-time thing um, right. because mm. overall it's just more important than anything else. So, um, but yeah, we, we are a 501c3 organization. So all the business uh, donations are uh, tax deductible and um, they would go toward the donations would go towards our general operating funds so that we can work on all of the programs and all of those lead up to the expos that we do three times a year. Yeah. So it's, that's a nonprofit Designation. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, Cherokee Business Radio X was a nonprofit in February. Oh, congratulations. No, no, no. Oh. <laughs> Just in February. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> now we're back in the black. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Understood. <laughs> we didn't get any designation. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, I understand. Uh, uh, so, all right. So let's talk about businesses. Is there is there a way maybe to um, get some re- return? There's there's the donation side of things, and that, and that's great. But could we could someone like a business radio X or, or law firm or whatever? Could we be a sponsor? Yes. Like at, at a, like at this upcoming sure. event, what might that look like? So, or probably get pretty creative with it, right? Yeah. So we have a you know event sponsorship for the expos where it's you know your traditional levels of mm-hmm. donating, and then we also have annual giving that a, a right. business may be able to do is to be an annual sponsor. Yeah. And then um, another way a business could give back to the organization is to lead workshops ah so we in return would advertise your business and then you can come and get in front of these kiddos and really make an impact so yeah yeah. donate your time (laughs) (laughs) no the time is precious yes it is and we appreciate we've had so many people already do this and participate in the workshop so those have been great so probably an off-air conversation, but I want sure. to plant a couple of seeds with you before we wrap this okay. segment and, and move to, to our other guests. Um, what if Business Radio X sponsored an upcoming mm-hmm. event and maybe got some presence in, in the value of that? I don't know, in the literature, there's a banner sure. or something like that. Uh, but what if periodically we had some of the kids come and talk about their business, either here in the studio or another idea that might be worth exploring. It might even help us get a third party sponsor. Mm -hmm. that could help fund is at events like this. One of the areas was kid biz radio or that kind of wonderful. And, and, and really, and let them kind of run the thing and, and maybe interview the board members. Yes. That that, that's worth exploring. That sounds incredible because we've been trying to think of, we thought about having like a booth there or something where we could, interview people that are there like oh. to get kind of like testimonials but just really hear yeah. back from the community what they got out of it and then also right. the kids what they're getting out of it because right. because like we talked about the kids learn what to make based mm-hmm. off of the sales we want to make sure that we're yeah. serving the community the way that they want to be served so we need that feedback and live and in person at that event is the best way to do that. All right. So we got a thumbs up from R- Renee and Amy, but uh, Harper, are you down for something like that? You like that idea of having radio at the event? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so would you be on the show and or would you be um, on the show but asking some questions? What do you think about that idea? That I'm sound, fine with that. You're cool with that. You got that. <laughs> yeah, you've done this. So you're like yeah. an expert now. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, Avery? Is that something you could get into? Yes. Yeah. All right. I well, think then kids we, interviewing kids would be really I important. think so. Really That'd be awesome. Okay. Yeah. We, we went from I think so to awesome. I yes. think we're, we're making some. <laughs> All right. So uh, let's, before we wrap, let's make sure that our listeners have an easy way to um, reach out to these to these businesses and so I want to make sure that, that – and, and let's make sure we get the info and, and we'll publish that sure. when, when we publish. Uh, but for now, let's make sure that they have an easy way to, to reach out and have a conversation with you or mm-hmm. learn more about uh, you and Amy, either one or, sure. or both. Whatever you think is appropriate, whether it's a, you know, a LinkedIn, a Facebook, uh, email, yeah. whatever. So we're on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok at Kid Biz Expo. So you can just search for us there and you'll find it. Um, and then you can go to kidbizexpo.com for our website and Very everything's there and you can message us on Facebook um, and we're very responsive and we'll be happy to talk to anybody that wants to connect. Well, it has been a real delight Thank having you. you and your entrepreneurs here in the studio. Sounds like we're going to get a chance to do a, 
to, to work and play together that sounds some great. more. But thank you so much. Keep thank up you. the good work. What you guys are doing is so important, We and we really do appreciate you and uh, the community and Business Radio X, uh, Terry Key specifically. We're going we're gonna to see what we can do to help, all right? I appreciate it. Hey, how about hanging out with us, gang, while we visit with our next guest? We might learn something. You I'm cool excited. with that? Yeah. You willing to stay with us, Harper? Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next up on Cherokee Business Radio, please join me in welcoming to the broadcast with Prime Leadership, Christy Chadwick. How are you? Great. Thank you for having me. Oh, it's a delight to have you here. So uh, what did you learn in that last segment? Well, I may be... Um they may, they're way smarter than I am, that's for sure. <laughs> you picked up on that quick, huh? I did, I did. <laughs> no, it was uh, a lot of fun visiting with them, so we are going to get more involved. Okay, let's talk about prime leadership, mission, purpose. What, what are you out there trying to do for folks? I'm, well, I'm at the next step um, that these kids would take uh, in their career. Uh, so I like to focus on the middle management, um, mm-hmm. where someone is just wanting to get into management, uh, learning those life skills, uh, learning the leadership, the culture, what it really means to build a great team, a great foundation, um, a, and what it is to really lead with culture. So um, i got to ask, and I've, I've been wanting to ask this question the minute that I saw you were going to be on the show. So I'm going to ask her this question. I've asked a lot of people this question over the, over the years. Uh, leadership, is it an art? Is it a science? How would you characterize that that word that thing i I wrote about this in my ebook um so (laughs) it's um part science part art okay um so part art is something that you're going to learn by experience um by grace under fire i guess um by just doing it uh and learning you know what works um when you're managing someone that everyone is managed differently just like if you when you have kids each kid is parented differently and if they burn the cakes you got to handle that that's, Otherwise. that's right that's <laughs> right, right. <laughs> yeah um but the, the the science part is the things that you can learn mm-hmm. um meaning that you know you you build your foundation um with goals and core values at mind you, you know in, at heart um and as long as you lead with your heart and with those core values then that's where the where the art comes in so if you do lead with your heart and your people see you kind of living into these core values that you're espousing do, do you it's my theory so i will tell you i my answer is yes but i'm interested in your in your answer do you feel like people will give you a little leeway give you a little space because they they recognize you're human too and that if they see you living into that they don't just automatically turn off turn off has that been your right experience? well i mean leadership is you know loyalty and trust that's a lot of it yeah um so you want your people to trust you and uh you want them to be loyal to you uh, I learned that from being in in a corporate world uh, mm-hmm. and now shifting uh, my career to to helping others um but we um the um core you know the core leadership and leading by heart is by you know leading by example so yeah. so the when you're thinking through establishing reestablishing communicating recommunicating values are there some I don't know, do's and don'ts or some, some things to try to keep in mind as you're establishing them or communicating them. Um, what, what's your take on that? Yeah, setting expectations early. Yeah. Um, so letting everybody know what the expectation is, uh, what your expectation. If you was to interview 100 people who's worked under me in the past, they would say that I'm hard but fair. Mm. Uh, and that's because I've set a very clear expectation. Um, and I, it's very high. Um, but you know, I give them the resources and communicate with them, let them know, you know, what I'm expecting, make sure that they're successful because if they're not successful, I'm not successful. Um, and that's the way I lead. Um, and that's, that's the workshops that I'm doing, uh, to lead other, uh, middle management, uh, to be top, top executives. And, w- and when you set the expectation and it's not met, um, doesn't mean you got to terminate someone, right? But you can't just ignore that or it's no longer an expectation. Is that accurate? That is absolutely accurate. So you just have to coach. Yeah. So you're, I mean, you're, when you, when they're doing something that you don't like, you know, you're having a meeting of the minds and you are, um, you know, maybe, maybe they see something that you don't see. So you have to listen as a leader as well. You just can't, it's not your way or the highway per se. 
um, but you're kind of meeting in the middle because sometimes they're going to have better ideas than you. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah. you, so sometimes that's a hard pill to swallow. Um, however, uh, that's how gr- that's how lead that's how leaders grow. So, um, talk about this workshop. So, t- w- walk us through some of the things we might expect if we participate in, in one of your workshops. Um, yeah. So, right now we have the ten day la- t- the ten day leadership challenge going on. Mm-hmm. Um, so, it's just ten days. It's virtual right now. Um, where you you know you get a, an activity, um, you send in the activity, and then we talk about it um, at the end of the week in a Zoom. Um, so we do one of those a month um, right now. So uh, it's just now started. We just started in February. Oh. Um, so it's brand new and off the ground, but it's so, so so far so good. Okay, so in the virtual environment, we have the conversation, we set the context, and then there's there's an activity or a set of actions. And then we're supposed to go back to the ranch in our own environment and apply that activity? Correct. And then you come back with real world, real world um, experiences, feedback. Um, so you're in like in a group of environments mm-hmm. um, with mentors. Some, you know, we, I have uh, other people that come in and help um, because obviously I'm don't, I don't know it all. So I want to bring <laughs> people in who know more than I do right. um, that can help, uh, help people who are in the workshop to engage and that kind of thing. I would think that that would be an incredibly powerful method of, of learning, far more powerful than just sitting and listening to you, no matter how eloquent or articulate or how right you might be about all these, to just write it down in my notebook. I mean, there's value in that, but compared to actually, okay, now go back to, to the office and, and do that and then come back with the results, which aren't always pristine, I'm guessing. Correct. That's the right? part. That's half science, half art. So uh, with them having engage engagement, that's your art part. Mm-hmm. So you're learning to actually implement what you're what you're uh, or you're uh, learning to implement what you're um, what we're teaching. So how does the whole sales and marketing thing work for a for a, a practice like yours? I, I'm anticipating that it might not be terribly easy to just pick up the phone and say, "Hey, would you like to participate in my workshop?" So how does the whole sales and marketing thing work for a thing like yours? Um, Fortunately, I started by warm leads, um, by just my network. Mm -hmm. Um, I I was at a position in November. Um, I decided to part ways um, at the beginning of this past November. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Uh, And um, decided to go to do my own thing from Mm -hmm. some encouragement from some past coworkers of mine. Oh, good. Um, So they had called me up and said, hey, uh, I'm wanting to teach your method um, Mm -hmm. to my co-workers to my team uh-huh. will you will you come in <laughs> and I was like uh, maybe not so I sit on it for a little bit kind of like with me coming onto the show right um, so it took me it took me a minute <laughs> to um to say yes but uh, eventually I did and I'm glad I did because it's been it's been real rewarding yeah all right so the the early part of a conversation if, if do you work with individuals as well or right now it's individuals and businesses all right so so if it's, if it's an individual or a business I guess Talk me through the early part of engagement. I, I, I recognize that part of what the execution might be a workshop or some individual coaching or any number of things, but that, that first conversation, that early in the engagement, what, what is that like? Are you, are you asking a lot of questions about my, my world? Like what's that, what's that first exchange like? I want to see what their mindset is. Mm. So I want to see what <clears throat> they, I mean, this, um, Leadership or my style of leadership is half half science, half art, mm-hmm. um, and I need to make sure that they don't want to operate totally on science because they will mm-hmm. not be successful. So I want to make sure that the partnership is successful. Kind of like when you're hiring somebody new, you're hiring for culture, not for um, not for the their ability because their yeah. ability most times most times you can train somebody to do a certain task. Right, it, you never can hire for culture. You can't. Once somebody is who they are, that's who they are. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, Lesson learned. Huh? Yeah. So um, once, you know, you have to define that cult, your company culture. Same thing when I'm working with people. I want to make sure that it's a fit and I'm not wasting their time. They're not wasting my time. So I want to make sure that they're 100%, you know, that I've set them up for success. So what do you, now that you've gone out on your own, you're doing this work, what, what are you finding the most uh, rewarding? What, what are you enjoying the most? Uh, helping business owners, uh, you know, re- redefine their operations yeah. Um, putting people in the right seat, uh, recruiting for them. So we, we, we started doing a little bit recruiting. So where we have people that come through 
our leadership training. Mm -hmm. Um, We've now partnershiped with companies, um, so we're actually onboarding them. So we've went into the company, Uh and we have um, we know how their operations work. So now we're training those people. So now instead of that six, you know, sometimes twelve week, um, yeah, training period that has been reduced because we're training them as we're onboarding them. So the hiring and the onboarding, um, I intellectually, I know just how critical that is. And practically, um, I, I haven't proven to be great at either. I, 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 I at least is self-identified. I have a tendency to hire in my own image, <laughs> right? Is that, I mean, I, that, that, I'm probably not the only one, no, right? No, <laughs> is no, that a no. common pattern? Yeah, I would say more than 70% of people do that. Wow. And I, if someone tells me they can do something, I just, I, I want to believe them. I want to give them that shot. So it's a, I'm not a, I'm not a tough job interview. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm, I don't, my interviews are not tough either. Um, I like it to be very, um, I want them to be very comfortable because I want to see how they are in their natural self mm. versus their adaptive self. Oh, um, talk, yeah, talk more about that. So that gets a little bit into the behavioral analysis. Um, so you want to make sure that, you know, when somebody's an adapt and have an adaptive personality, then that means that they're, on, they're adaptive to being who you think they are. Mm-hmm. Um, so when it's more natural in a pressure situation, that's who they're going to be, is their natural self. So, you know, if the building's on fire and they panic, they're not going to get your team out. They're going to get themselves out. <laughs> Um, so, you know, in, in an executive or a management role, you want to make sure that your, your team, um, comes out, you know, on top. So you're only as weak as your, you're only as strong as your weakest link. And, um, if you, you know, that's part of big and big in culture, making sure that, you know, you're making the, the natural self more than the adaptive self. So in our earlier segment, we touched on the idea of mentorship. A, a little bit. Have you had the, the the gift of someone mentoring you in your earlier career or as you start this? I did. I did. Uh, she may kill me for mentioning her name on radio, <laughs> but uh, Geraldine Moody was my mentor. So uh, I say she raised me in the bank. Um, <laughs> she was uh, one of the founders of Community Bank of Pickens County, mm-hmm. uh, brought me under her wing, taught me everything that she knew. Uh, and uh, I've been lucky enough to, to you know, house that friendship um, over all these years, but yeah, she would be my mentor. So some insights, lessons learned on either side of that table as a mentor or mentee, is that the right? Yeah. Okay. I like, well, let's take it from the mentee. Let's say that I have decided, you know what I, I need and want to be mentored. Are there some things I, I could do or maybe should not do to get the most out of that relationship, the ways I can approach those conversations or uh, any insights you might have on that? Um, Nope. Just be honest to yourself. Mm. Have the right mindset. Yeah. Um, You know, always learn from other people. So you never want to be the smartest person in the room. That's for sure. Not been a problem for me. I got got some challenges in this business. That has not been one of them. So, um, like everyone in this room, I, your um, your enthusiasm for the business, your your passion comes through certainly here in person. I'm sure over over the air, airways, and um, I mean you got to run out of gas sometimes. You, 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 where do you go? And I don't necessarily mean a, a physical place. Uh, how do you recharge the batteries and, and, and find your inspiration to keep going? Um, my family, for sure. Uh. So I come from a huge family. Uh, I have, there's five of me. So oh my. I have uh, a brother and four sisters and uh, two daughters, two teenage daughters. Um, both of them are very active. One of them does rodeo. So, uh, oh, cool. <laughs> See, I, I love these conversations. I, guys, and I've said this before on, on the air. If you want to really get to know someone and learn some interesting stuff about them, get yourself a radio show. Because <laughs> there's just so much. You know, it's that tip of the iceberg thing. There's just so much. So, all right, so you have a family member in rodeo. My daughter, my youngest. Oh wow! Mm-hmm. <laughs> How fun is that? Or I can uh, one. I, I raised two. Well, Holly raised two wonderful young <laughs> ladies, uh, but I got to hang out during the process. And my youngest was a gymnast, and uh, I, I was so proud of her. I thoroughly enjoyed watching the uh, the bars and the floor exercise. I could not watch the balance beam thing. Right. <laughs> 
<laughs> do, do you ever feel that way on any? Oh yes. yes. <laughs> my uh, my oldest daughter was a catcher in oh, softball, oh. so um, I've spent most of my life. Since I've had kids and they've been old enough to be active, closing my eyes for at least <laughs> 30 seconds during each, during each event. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, that is fun stuff. All right, so where do you think you're going to take this thing? Uh, do you want to, at some point, certify your methodology and have other people teach it? Is, is that uh, – do you – what do you – um, yeah, do I, I don't know that I would go certification, but, you know, I have some other people that work with me that uh, mm-hmm. I'm training to kind of teach the same thing. Right. Um, so, you know, lar- more workshops, more um, more people like myself that teach different things, right. so, you know, like social media or marketing, um, technology. So, like, maybe team up with other people mm-hmm. who are best in class in that domain and bring them to the – So, that, well, that's a neat idea. Yeah, and bring, bring like, a group – Mm-hmm. Um, and then have a, mem- you know, maybe have a membership of, of to that group yeah. where you meet once or, t- you know, twice a month. And then you're right. getting the best, um, have a speaker. And then I like the engagement piece where, you know, you're having activities and it's just not a lot of lecture. Um, and then, you know, mix that up with some real world uh, experience. Um, that way, you know, you can t- test it out and then come back and say, OK, this worked. This didn't work. Why didn't this work? Let's go back and try it again. Yeah. All right, let's, let's, if we can, leave our listeners, including the listeners in the room. So I'm going to ask you to, to approach it. Uh, you're going to be covering some, a, a lot of real estate here. But let's leave them with some counsel, for either from lessons learned, uh, good or bad, some things that you have found. You know, these, these couple of things I'm, I'm doing have really led to the progress so far. Boy, if I had it to do again or knew what I know now, I probably would not have invested as much time and energy in this. Anything along those lines that will help anybody in this room, including me? (laughs) (laughs) Um, That's a hard question. Um, So if I could go back and do anything again, it would be get a coach early. So so I had a mentor, um, but not really a coach. Um, so, you know, I've, I've, I learned the hard way, you know, I spent all these, all this money on softball lessons and writing lessons. Um, but Mm -hmm. we don't, we don't do those lessons in your career, um, and in your business. So, um, you know, as you're growing businesses, you want to learn as much as you can. And a lot of this, they don't teach at school. Um, but Mm -hmm. some, but you're learning real world. So you can have, you know, you want to do social media, find you a coach. Somebody knows how to do it better than you. (laughs) I think that's marvelous advice. All right, before we wrap, let's make sure that uh, that we leave our listeners with a, a way to reach out to you, learn more about your coaching programs, or if they'd like, have a conversation with you or, or someone on your, your team. Yeah, so you can find me on LinkedIn. Um, we have Prime Leadership LinkedIn and Facebook, um, and we have a website, so you can find us at primeleadership.com. Fant- oh, I meant to ask, why Why did you call it Prime? Why Prime Leadership? What, what, um, it was, I come up with a couple of names, sent it to my family. My husband's like, this is it. I said, okay. <laughs> uh, it, it sounds like your family, uh, and, and particularly your spouse, very supportive of this movie. They right? are, yeah. So, so I, yeah, I got to ask though, what was that conversation like when you went home and said, you know, I got this great job, hubby. Um, you know, and this is all good, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go out on my own. It, it was, that, was that a five minute conversation or was that a weekend? Um, he said, it's about time. <laughs> oh, wow. Good for you, hubby. Shout out for the hubby. Yeah. He said, it's about time. <laughs> all right. One more time. Coordinates, the best way to reach out to you. Um, you can find us on website, uh, www.primeleadership.com or on, um, I'm sorry, on website, www.primeleadership.com or on Facebook at primeleadership.com. We're on LinkedIn at primeleadership.com. Marvelous. Well, thanks for coming down Thank and visiting you. with us. Um, something you might entertain if, if, if you're up for it. I think it might be an interesting segment if you have a, a, a local client sometime that you've worked with, have them come on, maybe talk about their business so we can give them that, that opportunity as well. But maybe also talk about the, re, the relationship and what they got out of the coaching and the workshop and that kind of If you're Absolutely. up for that, yeah, yeah re, reach out and, and uh, we'll have like a, a special episode, a special segment on that. Absolutely. And I would love to mentor these kids. So great pairing. Very nice. I, I have no idea who's sitting at, at, at number four, but it's one of our young entrepreneurs. Mm-hmm. Layla. Layla. (laughs) 
<laughs> I, I'm horrible with the names. Layla, what do you think about that idea? You like that? Very exciting. Yes. <laughs> All right. So we got a lot of we got a lot done here, and we got a lot of, a lot of future plans. All right. This is Stone Payton for our guest today, and everyone here at the Business Radio X family saying we'll see you next time on Cherokee Business Radio. Yeah.